Yo, what is going on everyone in crypto space? Thank you guys for tuning in the channel today. Really do appreciate it. Now, as we have learned by being invested on top of the XRP ecosystem, there's a lot of naysayers, information, and people just outright saying that the project is a scam. Now, what you have to realize that all of this is BS. Uh, the, the network is incredibly fast with four second transactions, 1500 transactions per second plus scaling to 10K TPS, uh, as well as the network is practically free to use and this is all being combined in a software package and being licensed to some of the largest corporations on this earth, live in 40 countries and six continents. Now, I want to kind of use this analogy of naysayers. We have there, I mean, honestly, out of all the cryptocurrencies in existence, you look at all the cryptocurrencies in existence, they're the only cryptocurrency that gets the most hate. The cryptocurrency, or I should say the digital asset that gets the most hate is XRP because it's actually truly doing something revolutionary and working with the banks and penetrating into the bank, in, in the traditional financial system and, and the current cash flow uh, of, of money moving around globally. So XRP gets the absolute most, I mean, gets the most hate, most misinformation and gets called a scam the most, even though it's the number one altcoin or second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. So remember this, essentially any new technology is going to have so many naysayers, right? And now I almost see XRP, like, it seems like the more naysayers and the haters you have, it's the, the more successful the project will actually turn out to be. I want you guys to watch this. Now, this is absolutely mind-blowing how this is essentially a time lapse uh, from 19 years ago. Now, if we were to fast forward, you know, 15, 20 years in the future, people would go, why, why would you not believe in XRP? Obviously, you know, because it'd be, it'd be a lot more at mass adoption scale, at least what we're predicting, because it's just, uh, it's revolutionizing just liquidity, sourcing liquidity sense, which is just amazing. But anyways, here's what, okay, so now Amazon today is the largest online retailer in the world. Take that in. Amazon is the largest online retailer in the world. That's something like 75% of online Christmas shopping was done on Amazon. Like they, Amazon is an absolute retail giant. I just ordered like a new radiator off of Amazon for my car. I mean, they literally have everything. Amazon, absolutely revolutionary. They, they essentially set a standard for ordering items online. Because what happened was, you know, a couple of years ago, I would say like five, six years ago, you know, fast shipping wasn't really a standard. Now, of course, this is, you know, uh, uh, like a little bit more narrowed into their vision, you know, compared to uh, 1999, but they absolutely revolutionized online shopping. I mean, you can have it now. I think my radiator is actually supposed to be here uh, tomorrow. Like it's, it's, I ordered it two days ago. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. I mean, Amazon, what they have done with speed and shipping is quite impressive. It's crazy how I can order a car part and have it here in three days from across the U.S. It's absolutely what they have done with the online retail market is insane because they saw that they saw that there was a pain point and there was a need for an online retailing place for books and they scaled that to a much larger scale. So what they did was truly brilliant and they had the vision. And also we have a little, uh, for a source, we have an interview from 1997 and the way Jeff Bezos talks is just exactly like Brad Garlinghouse. He talks about the vision, he talks about the pain points and he talks about the solution they have and how they plan to implement that solution. It's so ripple right now. You can... Use as an you can use Amazon as an analogy for Ripple. I mean, almost perfectly. Now get this: back in 1999, listen to what they said about Amazon and what how and how the person who's being interviewed, who is an, who's a big investor of Amazon at the time, his vision actually came to fruition. And this is 19 years ago. Let's give this a watch. Generation grew up with Sears, and Amazon is worth 20 percent more than Sears is worth in market capitalization. So this is a serious investor, right? Serious investor giving the vision why Amazon will be successful and why it's worth, you know, 20% more market capitalization than Sears. Because Sears, like, you know, was kind of the big retail dog back in the time, but they've just, I mean, they're, they're actually, like, they're, they're actually, like, bankrupt now. So this guy, what he said was actually pretty spot on. Let's keep listening. How do you view that phenomenon that Amazon today is worth more than Sears? And, and you can clearly tell this guy is taking him as a joke. Now listen to what he says after this. Investors are focused on the future. Amazon has growth potential that Sears doesn't. A couple of geeks who sketched out some software. Just a couple of geeks who sketched out some software. That is literally what Ripple Labs is. New technology is amazing. Keep, keep watching. Could destroy Sears Roebuck. That's the beauty of technology and the microprocessor. We've never seen anything like it. So what he was saying back in 1999 that they were essentially going to take over Sears, look what happened now. This guy 
couldn't even take him seriously. He almost started giggling. He couldn't take him seriously. Oh, what, a new technology gonna, <laughs> was going to take over Sears? That would never happen, just a couple of geeks writing up some software. Now Amazon is the absolute largest online retailer in the world, the largest online retailer in existence. Remember how he just said that they were going to beat out Sears' business model? Guess what? They're going bankrupt. They are literally, Sears is going bankrupt. The one in my town has already closed. I mean, they're absolutely bankrupt. So what this guy had, which was an inv was an investor in Amazon, he had the vision. One, that's the, really the three steps here. You got the vision, you see the pain points, and you have the solution. And that's exactly what this investor believed in with Amazon. And now look at them today. They're the most one of the most successful startup examples of all time. Now, I want, I'm going to link this in the description below, and after the video, I want you guys to go check this out, because when you listen to what, what Jeff Bezos says, I mean, it's crazy to think that he had no clue that in the next, you know, 10 years, this guy would be a full-on multi-billionaire, right? So this is him back in 1997. He's discussing, essentially, if you watch this interview and watch any other interview with Brad Garlinghouse, it's exactly the same. He, they explain the vision, they explain the pain points, and they explain the solution. That's where it's almost like, I'm going to kid you not, please like go watch this after the videos. I'm going to drop it in, in the description. When you watch this video and watch a Brad Garlinghouse interview, it's almost like freaky how, how like aligned they are because they always, they keep saying what the vision is, what the pain points are, what the problems are, what, where's the need at? And they provide the solution. And what's funny is everyone, I mean, there was a lot of naysayers back at Amazon. I mean, you could see this guy from NBC this dude was almost like, almost laughing his ass off. He's thinking, you know what? A couple of computer geeks writing up software. They're not gonna, they're not gonna overthrow a Sears business model. And I look at today, Sears is bankrupt. So I mean, absolutely, it's just incredible how a company can just have a vision, find a problem, have a solution, and you can end up being one of the largest companies in the world. Now, what's Ripple doing? We're doing the exact same thing. We're taking the old model, which is walking into a bookstore, buying books, and you turn that into an online platform. What we're doing here with Ripple is we're getting rid of this, this physical, you know, correspondent banking system of actually like physically holding capital with each other and pre-funded accounts just to source liquidity in these certain countries that have illiquid quarters. And we're trying to overthrow this in very inefficient system. Now, what you guys will notice today, in every aspect of businesses, and look, take any business for example, they are all, they are absolutely all moving forward digitally. I mean, with shopping, uh, with social media, uh, I mean, with video games, I mean, everything with phones, everything is just getting more and more and more digital. I mean, essentially, technology is taking over our world as we know it, and we really can't do anything about it because innovation can thrive a lot uh, in, in capitalism. Now, with what Ripple's doing, it's it's taking a business model that hasn't changed for 50 plus years and is revamping it into a absolute new liquidity solution. Now, people hear this now and they go, oh, what? You're crazy. They're never going to take it. How are a couple of geeks just going to write up some software and take over the banking industry? How would that ever happen? There's people right now exactly like this guy, the Bitcoin community, uh, although the proof of work computers going, oh, Ripple, a scam. How are they going to do this? Banks don't want to use this. They don't, they don't want to do that. Little do they know we're live in 40 countries, six continents, and there's actually quite a few banks that do want to utilize XRP. And now the Ripple net is being built on the XP ecosystem by having XCurrent seamlessly integrate with XRapid as well as XV. So it's just absolutely, it's so like freaky how close this is to Amazon. And I'm telling you, if, if you watch the 60 minute clip, from NBC and then watch this interview, it just aligns with exactly what Ripple's doing. They have a vision, they they know the pain points, and they have the solution. They're actively working towards that goal. It's just absolutely mind-boggling how close this is. And Ripple is the exact same thing. New technology, new liquidity solution for banks, save 90%. Oh, banks don't want to use it. Oh, it's slow. It's centralized. Oh, it's a scam. It's not sustainable. No banks want to use XRP. So it's almost like the naysayers are fueling the business because Amazon had so many naysayers in the back of the day. Go, what? Is, you're going to make a store only online? How could you only have a store online? Why, why would that even? Why would people want to buy books online? They could just go into a bookstore, you know, talk to people and buy books. You guys see any bookstores around today that much? No, not really. It's all basically online. A lot of retail is now done online because they had the vision, they saw the pain point, and they had the solution. And it's exactly what Ripple's doing. We're taking, we're throwing out this whole playbook of this absolutely ridiculous 50-year-old correspondent banking system of transfers. I mean, could you imagine? Imagine if cars today were the same as they were 50 years ago. I mean, some classic cars are obviously kind of cool, but you know, for the most part... 
as cars continue to be manufactured, they get more and more sophisticated and more and more complex and just more and more essentially amazing in, in terms of what they can really do with technology. We're talking like we have cars right now driving themselves with, with no people, no, no one driving them. That's what we're getting with cars. And so we're seeing every single business model in this world. Every single business model is moving digitally. Everything. Look at any business you can find in some aspect, they are moving digitally. But the one thing that has not moved digitally is payments. Now, granted, PayPal, all these front-end payment providers, sure, instant doesn't is not the same thing what XRP is doing. Instant payment by PayPal or like, you know, Zelle, that's not the same what XRP is doing. They're just fronting the cash flow. We're talking about changing the whole idea of settlement on the back end for banks where the real business is done. We're changing that whole aspect, throwing out the current 50-year-old playbook and having a new way of sourcing liquidity where you don't have to have capital tied up in countries where you don't want it. And necessarily where a fiat currency, that doesn't seem too sustainable. Remember when the Turkish lira dropped 25% overnight? Yeah, a lot of banks lost a lot of money on that because they're holding dormant capital with banks in that country just for liquidity. So they have to sit there and fish out millions, if not billions of dollars, just to have sufficient liquidity. And Ripple's coming in with an entirely new blockchain system where they can source liquidity on demand and save about 90 per, up to 90%, depending on the current liquidity solutions. What's it called? Uh, SendFriend. They were actually, oh no, it was BTEC. BTEC, they, their current uh, remittance transfer cost, consumer-facing cost, was actually, uh, it was $20. And by using RippleNet, and I think it's X-Rapid, it obviously is my opinion, but Brad Gronghouse, his words, just, we're going to use his words, not my speculation, we're going to use his words. By BTEC using the RippleNet technology, they were able to take their consumer-facing fee from $20 to $2, and overnight, they saw an 800% growth in remittance usage on their platform. An 800% growth overnight by using RippleNet, and they cut the consumer-facing cost and the settlement back-end cost at the same time while making more profit in the end while keeping the consumer happy. You're telling me something like that, that can cut costs by 90%, isn't going to be revolutionary, is not going to take over the banking system? Is it going to kick out the 50-year-old model of transfer? Absolutely not. And that's why you see Swift all of a sudden enabling Swift GPI. Which Swift GPI, guys, it's front-end Ferrari shell and Model T. It's it's just age-old tech with just fancy front-end. That's it. Absolutely it. So that's why we're seeing all of a sudden Swift come out with GPI because, again, they're getting threatened because of, of, of Ripple, essentially. They won't say it admittedly, but the reason why they're all of a sudden enabling GPI and making their own blockchain is really just a buzzword of, you know, fronting consumer, fronting the consumer, the fr fronting the beneficiary, the cash, essentially. That's all it really is. So that's why you're seeing Swift all of a sudden come out with GPI because they're going, holy crap, we're going to get beaten out if we don't try to do something. Inevitably, they can't they can't escape it. This, this old model, you can't build on top of this old model. We don't build cars today off of the Model T. We build them off of new, more sophisticated design. Absolutely, XRP is going to take over. There's no way it won't. There's no way it won't. These gigantic corporations can't see a 90% savings and ignore that. They can't ignore innovation. They cannot ignore innovation. As businesses, if you ignore innovation, you are going to fail. Take Blockbuster, for example. They ignored innovation. Netflix was a startup. They're going, oh, pff, there's no way they're going to do that. This is just a joke. What happened? They're now bankrupt, and Netflix is the top dog for streaming, for streaming movies, essentially. So, so that's where businesses can't ignore innovation and you can't ignore when your competitors are beating your rates by 90% and are getting transactions sent and settled instantly. This technology is going to take over, but again, it's going to take some time. Again, these people had the vision back in 1999, but look at them now. They're absolutely the largest. Imagine if you would have invested 10 grand to Amazon when it was just a startup in it. Not even going public yet. Imagine how rich you'd be right now. Here's the thing. They had the vision in 1999, right? Granted, it was a great technology. It was a great idea. But again, all technology takes time to be adopted. This is why end of year price, I don't care about. I really don't care about. I'm in this for the long haul because this is a brand new technology. No matter how great the new technology is, it still needs time to be adopted and the ecosystem still needs time to grow. I don't care if I have to wait 10, 20 years for XRP to really do something. It's absolutely a revolutionary technology and what they're doing by completely revamping the current liquidity model is absolutely insane and we're talking about a market that does 5.3 trillion dollars a day in transfers cross-border and you're telling me that you're telling me that that ain't gonna be huge i'm telling you guys these naysayers are bullcrap final thing i want to end this on Basically, the whole point of this video is that there's going to be constant naysayers. There are so many people naysaying Amazon. Look at them now. They're one of the largest corporations in existence and the largest online retail market in the world because they had a vision, they saw the pain points, and they had the solution.
but no one believes in them, except for a few select people like us, a small percentage of the population that can really see the vision and see where our world is going to move digitally. Whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not, humanity is going to continue to move into the digital age, and there's no way we can keep a 50-year-old banking model sustainable for much longer. Last thing I want to cut. I love that in the fun story. Lots of rich. Last thing I do want to tie this into is this freaking absolute garbage from Bloomberg. And this is where there's actually, you can go on Wayback Archive and you can find articles from, I believe, actually Bloomberg naysaying on Amazon. And you can find tons of articles from 1999 of where they're absolutely just saying Amazon, oh, it's going to fail. It's about like, especially with the dot com boom, oh, it's bound to fail. It's a bubble. It's never going to come back up. That's absolute BS. As long as you got fundamentals, fundamentals are key. Amazon really had fundamentals. Now, Bloomberg, they all of a sudden come out and say, oh, Wall Street is quietly shelving its Bitcoin dreams, which is actually BS because Wall Street's actually been planning to get into cryptocurrency for four years based on numerous sources. And you're telling me just one little Bitcoin drop, then they're out? So, so you're saying that, so Bloomberg's basically saying that, hey, oh, because Bitcoin, because it dropped, oh, Wall Street's out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Wall Street definitely wasn't buying up foreclosures by the thousands during the 2008 bubble. And yeah, during the 2008 bubble, they were buying up foreclosures by the thousands. They are buying up foreclosures by the thousands. Institutions thrive off of markets dropping heavily. That's where they have the most financial opportunity and the least amount of risk. So don't believe this crap by Bloomberg coming out and saying, even though I'm not even a huge supporter of Bitcoin, even though they're, Bloomberg is basically trying to say that Wall Street, they're, they're, not gonna, they're just not going to pursue their cryptocurrency uh, platforms anymore. Yeah, so basically, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, Fidelity, Ameritrade, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, Nominal Holdings, uh, Northern Trust. Yeah, they all just went, oh, it's dropping. We're out. You think they're doing the same thing with the stock market right now? No, they make a lot of money off the drops because they control the emotions of the retail investors while they're picking up very low prices, which is what I think Bloomberg is actually doing. The people behind Bloomberg, Bloomberg's just a puppet. That's all they are. So literally, this really triggered me. Like You guys could tell on today's stream, this actually really triggered me right here, but I'm telling you. Any naysayer, any FUD, any, oh, it's centralized, it's a scam, banks don't want to use it. They were all saying basically the same thing about Amazon 1999. Look at what it is today. Even though it's a great technology, it's going to take some time, but all that matters is that we hit that destination, and I believe we will, and I'm very excited for 2019 it will be the absolute year of production. And right now, guys, remember, we are live in 40 countries, six continents. We're live in a lot of areas. We just got to get the extra rapid deployment. And remember, Mexico, and we just got news today, Philippines are actually both X rapid enabled regions. So... All good news there. Remember, guys, don't focus on the naysayers. Don't focus on the FUD. I bust a lot of FUD on this channel. But mainly, don't listen to the naysayers. Uh, great technologies. Anything great is always going to have haters, just like this channel. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys for tuning this video. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe. Check the links in the description if you do want to support the channel. Make sure you check out this video in the description below. It's literally exactly what Brad Garling House is doing right now. It's the same exact format. They got the vision. They, got, they know what the pain points are, and they got the solution. It's only a matter of time before capitalism does this thing, and the banks adopt the new technology. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, as always, I do appreciate your insight. Make sure you do, do let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, sorry if I kind of like babbled a little much in this video, but it's just kind of really getting on my nerves lately how many naysayers we have in cryptocurrency, and especially XRP. It's all this old centralized. It's fu Oh, it's a, banks don't want to use it. It's a scam. But then you really look into it and it's actually a truly amazing technology that's actually, that really does have a decent client list. I mean, look at this. This is just some of their clients. They're not listing all of them, but look at some of these big names they're working with. You're telling me these big institutions don't have plans for this technology to have a big rollout and beat out all their competitors and bring down the rates as low as they've ever been? I mean, come on, guys. It's obviously going to take over. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.